In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I don't remember the man's name, so I'm going to call him Charles. Let me tell you what my friend told me about him. In his later years, Charles suffered from severe arthritis. His, his body was bent and so misshapen that he couldn't do anything for himself anymore. The nurses in the nursing home had to turn him when he needed to be turned. They had to change his clothes and his diapers, and they had to feed him. But Charles loved Jesus, and he accepted his cross willingly. But his sons never did. They rejected Jesus, and they, they harbored bitterness toward God for the suffering of their father. And, and they quit going to church and having a relationship with Christ. But whenever they came to visit their dad, he would express his joy of being a child of God. And he expressed the joy that he looked forward to the day when Jesus would rescue him through his death, and he would be made whole and new again. And he always encouraged them, stay close to this Savior who gives you joy. Now, how do you find such a joyful outlook in the midst of suffering? Could it be that he was given the same measure of the Holy Spirit as was St. Paul? Our theme this week is United in Expectation, and today we are united in expectation as we wait for joy. What better place for Charles and for us to learn about joy than the book of Philippians? Paul expresses that joy throughout the book. Joy in the Savior who had saved him and the one who had guided him in his journeys through life. Yet, here's what Paul says to you and me in Romans chapter 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus. You know, when we think of the word joy, we often think about the emotion of joy, being happy because something good has happened to us. But St. Paul thinks about joy differently. Joy doesn't spring up necessarily and simply from our emotions, but it comes from outside of us and it works its way into us, specifically through the good news of Jesus. It comes from knowing that we belong to Jesus. Joy is knowing that our sins are forgiven, that Jesus died for them and paid for them on the cross. Joy is knowing as Paul says, that nothing can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Joy is knowing that all sin and sadness and all our troubles are simply temporary and that one day our Lord is going to free us from all of them. Paul understood that. Charles understood it. What about us? Joy is oftentimes called the fruit of the Spirit, one of them. I, I like to think of joy as sort of like a current that constantly flows in our lives. Sometimes it flows strong like a river that's overflowing its banks. Sometimes, like Paul and Charles, we take our eyes off of Jesus. We find so many reasons to complain about our lives and ask, what's there to be joyful about? But joy, that current, never dies within us. Joy is knowing that we keep our eyes on Jesus, on his forgiveness, on his love. And that God works all things for our good. Joy is what motivates us to take every one of our prayers, every one of our requests, everything that we desire to our God in prayer, knowing that he is going to respond with only good answers to each of those prayers. After Charles died, something wonderful happened. His sons, who had witnessed the joy of their father in the most trying of circumstances, started going back to church. And their resentment toward God was changed into humble, penitent love for him. And they told their pastor, we want to know the joy that dad had. 
And of course, they found it in the Word of God, in the gospel of Jesus' love for them. I think we all know how easy it is to let our emotions get, away, get in the way of our joy. I know it's easy for me to be too much like Jeff Dunham's Walter. It's too easy to exhibit a lack of joy in our lives. But let's all share the best Christmas present that we can give to others. Let's share that current of joy. And we do that by remembering who we are. Forgiven. Forgiven people. And, and people who are able to overcome all things through him who loves us. People on the way to heaven. Let that joy shine in you. Let it be infectious and let it touch others. Let it or let them know that it is theirs to share and to experience. And it's something that you want to share with them. Listen to Paul one more time and be eager to share that joy when he says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Amen. The first Noel The angel did say Was to certain poor shepherds In fields as they lay In fields where they Lay keeping their sheep on a cold winter's night that was so deep they looked up and saw a star shining in the east beyond them far and to the earth it gave Let us pray. 
Rejoice, rejoice, believers, and let your light appear. The evening is advancing and darker night is near. The bridegroom is arising and soon is drawing nigh. Up, pray and watch and wrestle, at midnight comes the cry. You saints who hear in patience your cross and sufferings bore, shall live and reign forever when sorrow is no more. Around the throne of glory the Lamb you shall behold, in triumph lay before him your shining crowns of gold.